Well, good morning. How is everybody this morning? It's nice, it's nice and cool outside, right? Okay, we've had a few blips of, uh, of heat so far this year, but it hasn't been uh, too, too bad. Okay, so the training goals today are to review the regulatory language and heat illness preventive measures. Um, I'm also gonna share with you some best practices that employers have told me about that are helping them uh, keep their employees from getting sick out there when it's warm. And then we wanna increase awareness and commitment to safety and health at the work site. I see some people that I think have come back to this class that have been here before, so that's good. You're, you've come back a year later, uh, keep your level of awareness up. If you haven't been here before, um, well, hopefully you learned something today. Okay, so heat illness prevention elements include, and these are the regulatory elements, right? Access to water, access to shade, weather monitoring and acclimatization, high heat procedures, employee and supervisor retraining, written procedures, including emergency response. Okay. So of all of these elements, what's the number one cited standard by Cal OSHA over the last few years? <laughs> Access to water. Anything else? Shade. No? Pardon me? Written procedures. Written procedures. So, you know, I'd hate for someone to get a citation, right? If they're doing everything really well, they're preventing heat illness out there, they're providing water, providing shade, they've trained their employees, they're doing a great job, but they just didn't have what they're doing in writing, which is required, right? Okay? And that's the number one thing. And the, one of the reasons I believe that's the case is that in 2005, when this was an emergency regulation, it didn't require the procedures to be in writing. But when they made it a permanent regulation in 2006, in the summer of 2006, they added on right at the very end there that, yeah, and by the way, you need to put in writing how you're doing all of these things regarding water, shade, you know, high heat procedures, training, acclimatization, okay? So those are required to be in writing and required to be at the site and available, right, to the Cal OSHA inspector and to your employees. Um, before we start the presentation, I think it's important that we uh, kind of go over how humans regulate heat, okay? What do we normally, what's our normal uh, body core temperature? What, do, what are we real happy at? 98.6, right? And so we try to keep it at 98.6 because if all of a sudden our body core temperature starts to get above 98.6, right, we, we start to feel some symptoms, uh, certain systems within our body start to go a little haywire. So we try to keep it at that 98.6 point. And the things that affect that are these four things that I've got up here, okay, on the flip chart. And the first one is work. And you see I've put a, a red plus next to work. And the reason I've done that is that we can only gain heat from doing work. And the harder we work, the more heat that we gain. Okay, it makes sense, right? If I'm just out there walking a job site, uh, just like this, like cotton clothing, I'm not going to gain all that much heat, okay? Say I'm at a construction site, but if I'm the person working for a plaster, shoveling sand into the mixer, I'm going to gain a lot more body core heat, right? So that's what we're talking about there, right? Gaining heat by doing work. The next thing that we've written down here is surfaces, and you're going to see there's a plus and a minus next to surfaces. And this is what we call radiant heat exchange. And so we're talking about the surface of our body, right, either gaining or losing heat from other surfaces. So if this chair was a heater and was a really hot surface, and it was hotter than the surface of my body, okay, I could, I could actually gain heat from that surface, all right? On the other hand, if this is a surface, I open my refrigerator up and this is a very cool surface, and I'm, I'm warmer than that surface, right? I can lose heat, okay, to that surface. So a plus or a minus, radiant heat exchange, hot and cold surfaces, and the surface temperature of our body. The next one is air. So this is just the air surrounding our body, so air temperature. And this also is, is plus or minus, right? So we know that feels real good when our body, 
the surface of our body's warm, okay, we want to we wanna be able to lose heat to that cooler air. And so when we step into the shade, normally we're losing some radiant heat. The surfaces aren't going to be as warm, and the air should be cooler in the shade. So that's the whole idea of shade here, is that we can kind of cool off, right? It's going to get a little bit lower here, the surfaces and, and the air temperature. The last one here is our main cooling mechanism, and that's sweat and evaporation, OK? So when we talk about sweating and evaporation, this is, this is when the, the, the core of our body starts to heat up from doing work or hot surfaces or hot air, starts to heat up and we start to get above 98.6, that blood in the core of our body is going to take it out to the surface and we're going to lose that heat through sweat and evaporation. Okay, that's, that's the general idea here. So what we want to do as we go through these four sorts of pluses and minuses here, we want it all to come out to zero so we stay at 98.6. That's the goal. Because once we start to heat up, right, we get up to 102, you know, 103, we're going to really start to feel some symptoms of heat exhaustion. We get up to 104, 5, 6, 7 body core temperature, and we start to feel some symptoms of heat stroke, right? Including, when we get up to, to heat stroke, right, one of the key differences between heat exhaustion and heat stroke is that our, our sweating mechanism shuts down, right? Someone presents with heat stroke, you have hot, dry, red skin. Whereas if it's heat exhaustion, you're sweating profusely to try to catch up to keep that body core temperature down. Okay? So that in general, before we start talking about water, shade, right, high heat procedures and training and all of these things, I think it's important that we understand because this is what, where the standard actually comes from. So we stay at 98.6.